Welcome to episode 20 of Solar TV, where we talk all things solar. <laughs> On today's episode, we're covering the three main components of an off-grid solar system and how to size them up. We're also going to talk about wind energy at the end of this episode. Ross, what are the three main components of an off-grid solar system? So you get your solar panels, your batteries, and a generator. Generator. And let's start with solar. So in terms of sol si solaring a sizer system, mm -hmm. in terms of sizing a solar system, um, how would you size a solar system off the grid compared to on the grid? Good question. So um, when sizing a solar system on the grid, there's one major factor that's taken into consideration, mm -hmm. and that's that you've got grid power and you can sell your excess power back to the grid. Yeah. So what you might do is size up your solar system in a way that when you're not home to use the power, mm. you actually sell as much power as you can back to the grid. And hopefully that money you make back from um, the grid power is enough to offset some of your night usage. Yeah. Yeah. But off the grid, there's off the grid. There's obviously no grid to sell the extra power to. Exactly. So you don't need a system that's going to generate as much excess power. Um, and and for those of you who are across across the nations, a lot of countries you can sell your excess solar power back to the power lines. Like in Australia, we sell our excess power, and so we we put big solar systems on our homes to sell extra power and make a bit of money to help our electricity bills. Yeah. But off the grid, this isn't a factor. No, off the grid, what will actually happen is by the in the morning, the solar panels will start charging your batteries as soon as they have enough power. And as soon as your batteries are full, if nobody is home or you're not drawing much power during the day, the inverters are actually smart enough to turn your solar panels off and yeah. it'll actually stop them from producing power. So if you've um, gone up and designed your solar panels as if you were designing a grid system, what you're gonna find is you might have 10, 15 kilowatts of solar panels on your roof sitting there 80% of the day doing nothing. Yeah. Um, and your batteries have charged by 10, 30 in the morning. Yeah, and it's, it's a really smart thing to point out because you, you generally don't need a system that big if you're off the grid. Yeah. For your average home. Solar uh, system, yeah. Solar system, sorry. As big as you would need or potentially consider getting if you're going to sell the extra power. Yeah. So, you know, your average home might get a five or six kilowatt system off the grid. You can often get by with a two or three kilowatt system just to charge those batteries up. And you're going to rely heavily on the batteries being yeah. off the grid yep. more than the solar. And this leads to the next uh, part two, which is sizing up the batteries. Batteries, yeah. So, I mean, as a general rule of thumb, I generally say... Um, general rule of thumb where you generally say? Yeah, a bit mixed up there. <laughs> general rule of thumb, I um, would say, when doing your calculations, and once you've come to uh, your calculation of how much you use per day, how much yeah. power you use per day per average, um, time's up by about two or three, and it, so it allows you... Two um, or three days buffer? two or three days buffer mm. for any days that where we may we might not see enough sunlight to charge the batteries through the solar mm -hmm. so for example if you're using on average 10 kilowatt hours a day you might look at a battery bank of about 20 or 30 kilowatt to give you that excess uh capacity of stored power yep. uh, for times where the weather's poor especially in in the in like winter and things yeah. like that yeah so bit more batteries off the grid, less solar. Yep. The bigger your battery bank is and the more power you can store, the less you'll run the generator. And that's important because running a generator is the most expensive part of being off the grid. Yep. And if you get a smallish battery bank and some people run solely off generators off the grid and, and if you're watching this and you are in that boat, you'll understand how much uh, Mm. petrol or diesel the generators use and how expensive it is to live just off the generator power yeah so we want to maximize our battery bank and minimize our generator usage yeah and so for people that are building a battery bank and a solar panel uh, system for off the grid they only need to get a small gener a much smaller generator Ross. Yeah. and why is this it's because when you're um when you set up the off-grid system with batteries and solar and a generator, you only really need to use the generator to charge your batteries. Mm. You don't need to size the generator to run your whole house. Good tip. And this is where generators can be very inefficient mm. is because if you're only running off a generator, you need to size the generator at a worst case scenario, everything in the house is turned on. Mm. Problem is- You've got a big generator. That's gonna get you a big generator. And a lot of pet, a lot of diesel. Which uses a lot of diesel. <laughs> now the issue with that is when you're not using everything in the home, mm. you're using maybe a quarter of what you're using mm. in the house, um, the generator's output doesn't go down enough to um, 
you know, if you're using if you're using seventy five percent less, the generator doesn't the go down seventy five percent. Doesn't go down seventy five percent. It might only go down ten to fifteen percent because generators have a minimum output they always have to do to keep running. So it becomes a very inefficient way to run a small amount of power. And to power your home. Yeah. And so you're better off getting a smaller generator that detects with these smarter off-grid systems these days as your battery bank's getting low and start to run for maybe two hours and, and bring your charge back up in those batteries. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe over a couple of hours if the home's drawing power yeah. and then turning off and you've only spent a few dollars on diesel or petrol, yeah. which is much more efficient. Exactly. And the last little thing we wanted to talk about when going off the grid is wind turbines. Yeah. The topic of wind turbines and off grid is very popular, mostly because a wind turbine can run 24 hours a day. It doesn't need the sun, it just needs wind. So for people in windy areas, this is a very enticing option. Whereas we don't, however, install many wind turbines on off grid solar systems. Why, why don't we install many wind turbines? Well, we do a lot of, um, here in Australia, we, we work on 240 volts, so I mean, this whole conversation we've probably had is based around a, a 240 volt AC off-grid system, mm. not so much a low voltage DC system. Um, so when it comes to converting wind power to um, 240 volt AC, they're not very cost effective. Mm. Um, and, and I'm comparing that to bat lithium batteries and solar panels. Um, we've found that for an effective wind turbine, you know, including the pole and everything to get it fully set up, it's a lot more uh, a lot bigger investment than, than if you were, mm. were to put the money into batteries and solar. And to give you an idea out there in solar land, uh, wind turbine, a quality wind turbine that generates about one kilowatt an hour is about 6,000 Australian dollars. Um, and for that much money, you can get more lithium batteries or more batteries on your solar system and increase that buffer time, which yeah. is so important when going off the grid, if not the most important part of going off the grid. Because yeah. the bigger your battery bank, the less you run the generator and the more money you're gonna save um, and sp less you'll spend on petrol I should, and, or diesel, I should say. Yeah, that's so, right. I, I just think that, you know, the investment and in money hasn't been put into wind as much as it has been put into um, lithium. The technological that, research. The, techn the technological research. Um, it's just happened that people uh, have, and uh, sorry, I should say the bigger companies have put a lot more money into uh, lithium. lithium batteries and solar panels and that side of renewable energy, not as much into wind and therefore wind just hasn't caught on um, as quickly and the technology not hasn't, as advanced. As, hasn't advanced as yep. fast as the other two and so it's not worse, mm. it doesn't worse, work any uh, any less better than the others, it just hasn't had the money invested into it to make it a, a cost as cost effective. For 240 volt off-grid yeah. systems. So, and, we, and I say that because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there with low voltage, 12 to 48 volt wind systems mm. powering, you know, gel and lead acid batteries that have managed to get it quite cheap and work well. Mm. Um, but for what we're referring to in this video is, is a 240 volt AC home um, with the DC converting to AC. There you go. Now, one last thing I wanted to slip in there, sounds weird, was uh, lithium batteries off the grid for people who are already have lived off the grid for a while with things like lead acid batteries, will be used to something called a depth of discharge, mm. which is where you have one kilowatt of battery in a lead acid battery, for example, but you can only use a certain percentage. Yeah. How much is the percentage usually? Um, around forty percent, depending on um, how long you want it to last. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I'd say forty to fifty percent is around the lead acid range yeah. yeah so if you're buying a lead acid battery banks in the past and you're off the grid you've always known to size it up to about 40 percent capacity because you're not actually going to get to use the rest of the battery mm -hmm. but lithium batteries these days when we're talking off the grid have usually about a 90 percent depth, depth of discharge which means you can use 90 percent of the battery's capacity yeah. if you buy a one kilowatt battery you're going to be able to use <coughs> excuse me um one kilowatt almost of that whole battery yeah and so that's something to consider when going off the grid as well yeah, definitely Thanks for watching episode 20 of Solar TV. If you get any questions about solar and batteries, leave them in the comments below. And as always, we look forward to answering them for you in the next episode of Solar TV. Thank you.